Today we're going to be talking about the first Seminole War. And in this war, Andrew Jackson basically captures the territory of Florida for the United States. So let's take a look at why this happened. First of all, there was a group of people called the Black Seminoles that were forming throughout the 17 and 1800s. These people were slaves, or escaped slaves, freed slaves, that would run from slave states, and rather than running up north, where there was freedom and possibly into Canada, they would run south into Spanish Florida. These black slaves, escaped slaves, would then live amongst the Seminole Indians and adapt to their lifestyle. According to the limited, pro limited primary documents we have, these, these black Seminoles lived a pretty good life. They were able to farm, they would have crops, and overall their life was pretty good once they left slavery and, and lived with the Seminole Indians. The defeated Native American tribes from other areas of the country, like the Creeks and other Native Americans that were beaten by the United States, would often move into Florida as well. So Florida became sort of this area of various groups of Native Americans and blacks that really did not like the United States. Let's take a look at the map here, and I'll explain a little further. So if you were a slave in Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, one of these southern slave states, it would be relatively easy for you to, to escape down into Florida. Florida was not part of the United States yet, it was part of Spain. So you, since Spain did not have slavery, you were then free, much like if you ran into Canada up here. All right, moving along. Spain, who was in control of Florida during this time in the 1800s, was a declining superpower. At one point in time, Spain was one of the most powerful countries in the world. They controlled basically all of Central and South America, most of North America, including Florida and what was the Louisiana Purchase. Um, but however, in the late 1700s and into the early 1800s, Spain was sort of falling apart. It was losing its colonies, its army was weak, its country was weak, they didn't have a lot of money, and because of that, their colonies were gaining independence and they were starting to, to lose their hold in the New World. Spain could not afford to supply Florida with troops or put settlers in Florida, so the, the Seminole Indians and the Black Seminoles were pretty much able to do whatever they wanted in the state of Florida because Spain did not have a big military presence there. Which brings us to why this is a problem for the United States. So during the War of 1812, England put soldiers in forts and things in Florida. It's because Spain let them as a assistance during the War of 1812 against the United States. However, after the war, England removed themselves from Florida. There was no reason for them to be there. And they left different forts in place there. The Seminole Indians, and specifically the Black Seminoles, then occupied these forts. One of them was called specifically the Negro Fort. The Negro Fort became an inspiration to slaves. Slaves would hear rumors of this group of runaway slaves who had a fort and they were kind of like soldiers and they were um, conducting raids and helping other people escape. So the Negro Fort became an inspiration for people who were enslaved to run away and, and join up with, with this group of kind of renegade slaves in Florida. Seminole Indians, including the Black Seminoles, would go to the the border of Georgia and they would start burning plantations, they would start hurting people and they would conduct raids and they kind of became this vigilante resistance to slavery and to the United States expansion. So it was a big problem for the United States. People in Georgia obviously were really mad. They kept having these Seminoles come up from Spain. The United States asked Spain to solve the problem. Spain could not solve the problem as we already talked about. So this group of Seminoles was pretty much running unchecked um, throughout the country. So what does the United States do? Well, the United States decides, well, if Spain can't solve this problem, then we're going to solve it for them. And they told General Andrew Jackson to take his troops and go into Florida and deal with the Seminole problem. Andrew Jackson does just that. He, he basically burns down many Seminole villages. He blew up the Negro Fort. He also um, made the Seminoles move basically down into the, the center of Florida, away from the, the Georgia border. But in addition to doing those things, Andrew Jackson did some things he wasn't supposed to do. He wasn't supposed to touch the Spanish forts, the limited ones that were there. But Jackson believed that the Spanish were actually helping the Seminoles, so he blew those forts up. In addition, there were a couple of English citizens living in Florida as traitors who Jackson believed were helping the Seminoles. Because of that, he executed them after giving them a very brief, very limited military trial. Well, as you can imagine, Spain and England were furious with General Jackson for his for overstepping the limits of what he was supposed to do. So this brings us to the part where how Florida actually became the United States. John Adams 
was the Secretary of State back then, so he was the one that was in charge of diplomacy, and he had to deal with Spain and England being very furious at the United States. The Seminole War put Spain in an awkward position because they couldn't stop the problem that, um, that America was mad about, but they also didn't really want the United States to enter their territory and blow up their, their military forts. So John Quincy Adams realized that Spain was weak, and he used it to gain a favorable negotiating platform against the, the Spanish. Basically, what, what Adams does is he is able to negotiate, give Spain some money, give them about $5 million, and purchase Florida for the United States. It lets Spain off the hook. It makes it seem like it's a purchase rather than a conquer, which it really was. And Spain gets a little money, and they're, they're rid of the problem of Florida. They don't have to worry about it anymore. So Florida becomes United States territory. Um, the Seminoles in Florida are stopped. Um, they are moved down into central Florida, but they continue to resist. Um, there will actually be two more Seminole Wars throughout the 1800s before the Seminoles are completely dealt with. So let's take a look at the map here. You see that this is the treaty that ne Adams negotiated, this Florida area that's kind of dashed, that becomes part of the United States. And then in addition, Adams negotiates a hard line on the western boundary between Spain and the United States. So that red line is where the boundary now is after the adams onis Treaty. All right, so our conclusions. The Black Seminoles were this community of runaway and freed slaves living with the Seminole Indians in Spanish Florida. The Black Seminoles provided hope for slaves and also resisted slavery with raids, and they even occupied uh, British forts that were left there after the War of 1812. Because of the slaves causing a problem, Andrew Jackson used his army to stop the Black Seminoles and occupied Florida against orders. Um, which caused a big problem, but John Adams or John Quincy Adams was able to negotiate, and Spain gives up Florida to the U.S. after a treaty, even though Jackson pretty much took it before that. And because of this, the United States continues to grow larger in, in size. They add Florida, they add some land out west in that new treaty line, and it causes the United States to kind of grow more powerful, um, both in international affairs and just grow larger in size.